Boy took the batteries out of the radio and plugged the fan into the ground. As the blades turned, surprisingly, the radio started making sounds. His father was astonished. The boy said this was a generator, and he wanted to make a bigger one to power a water pump to irrigate the dry crops. But he needed to dismantle the family's bicycle to use as parts for the generator. At this moment, the father deeply regretted letting his son go to school. He didn't even know what a drought meant to farmers. Not long ago, the boy took a bath. When he returned to the room, he found new school uniforms on the bed. He knew he could go to school now. The boy's family was not wealthy. They only paid for one week of tuition, but he was still very happy, because in this place, many people struggled to even eat. The boy wanted to change his fate through knowledge, but reality forced him to bow his head. After school, he had to help with household chores. Only when it was dark did he have time to study, but by then he could no longer see clearly. He wanted to light a kerosene lamp, but the family was too poor and had to save the kerosene. In the exam the next day, the boy only scored 62 points. He was very dissatisfied. To be able to light the kerosene lamp, the boy tried everything. He would help neighbors fix radios, but knowing these skills was useless. Boy could only go to the garbage dump every day, hoping to find something useful. That day, when the boy returned home, a tobacco company was doing business with the village. They needed a large amount of firewood to dry the tobacco and offered to purchase the village's trees at a price of 2,000 per ton. The chief told everyone that without trees, the crops would be flooded in the rainy season and then everyone would have nothing to eat. But faced with the immediate benefits, the villagers were tempted and directly signed the contract. Even though the father strongly objected, it was useless. Soon, logging machines arrived in the village. The boy could only watch and do nothing. That night, he asked his father for tuition, but was told the family had no money. In his father's view, filling the stomach was more important than going to school. The boy was expelled from school for not having tuition, and it was from this day on that the rain fell heavier and heavier, turning the original roads into rivers. Without the protection of trees, floods directly rushed into the fields. The father took a hoe, trying to drain the water, but nothing worked. And after the rainy season, a three-month-long drought followed. The land cracked, and the few remaining crops fell to the ground. The family's only source of income was cut off. He knew he could never go to school again.